Hello, everybody, and welcome to Alton Park and the beginning of a new season of racing for the Janetta Racing Championships. We've got the Michelin Janetta Junior Championship kicking off our afternoon here uh, in the Easter sunshine. Whisper it, everyone, but actually really pleasant conditions so far this weekend at Alton Park. Uh, this is an event that tr traditionally has had a uh, bit of a mixed history of weather, but Nice day today, it is fairly warm. The ambient temperature in the low teens, the track temperature a little bit uh, higher than that because there isn't really uh, much in the way of cloud cover or breeze actually around the place. So in other words, pretty much perfect conditions for racing. We've got a good grid actually of Virginetta Junior drivers assembled for our opening weekend of racing. Some 23 of the youngsters set times in qualifying earlier on this morning and it was a typically close affair. The top nine of them covered by just over one second uh, and the first couple of seconds separating most of the field. So it should be a fairly close race around what is a real driver's favorite circuit, the Alton Park International Layout, uh, which as always is hosting the opening rounds of the British GT Championship this weekend, begins with the tricky right-hander at Old Hall, the roller coaster ride through Cascades, and being the international circuit, we use the top end of the circuit uh, through the shell ahead and the Britain chicane overtaking opportunities into most of the big braking zones and these being Janetta Juniors you know that they will go for it regardless of the narrow and undulating nature of the 2.7 mile circuit so cars are lining up on the grid then ahead of this uh, opening race and uh, well, an interesting grid it is, as you'd expect with a junior category. Lots of new names uh, coming into the championship uh, who we've not seen before. Many of them fresh out of karting, and it is one of those new names. One of the many rookies on the grid uh, who will start from pole position. That is uh, Ethan Jeff Hall for R Racing. R Racing have been one of the top teams in Janetta Junior Racing over recent seasons, and uh, they have a car on pole. They have a car actually on the inside of row two as well, Marcus Sater uh, for R Racing as well. And in between them, a returning driver driver, Charlie Hart, uh, back with Elite Motorsport for his second season in the championship. There he is, driver of car number 50, was chatting to his father, Chris, who is a, a Alton regular, multiple race winner right around here in Alton Park in various categories, uh, is his father, Chris, and uh, the uh, next generation of hearts uh, looking to hopefully find more success this year. Charlie was a regular front runner last season in his debut year and now coming in as one of really only a handful of non rookies. I think there are six um, returning drivers on the grid this uh, year at least for this opening weekend anyway. And uh, Charlie, the leading of them, Chase Fernandez, another. He'll be starting from the second row of the grid, just ahead of Henry Jocelyn. So as you'd expect, lots of the second year drivers are towards the pointy end. And it's always fascinating over the course of a year in junior racing to watch those who are brand new to this uh, getting uh, quicker and quicker as the season goes on. So drivers are lined up on the grid they will have a green uh, flag lap to get some heat into the tires to check out the track conditions once again and then when we do go racing it will be a 20 minute race a short shot race is not a huge amount uh, of time to get things done and if you are a bit further down the grid than you'd like to be uh, such as for example Tom Ingram Hill for our racing you can see in the number five car there uh, then uh, you need to get a bit of a shimmy on really to try and get near the front James Shotton potentially running into some sort of issues here he's chatting to the marshals the fox motorsport car is out of position at the very least on the grid i would say and it's almost as if he's rolled too far forward and then can't uh, reverse the car into place so we've got marshals and team members assisting him with either getting back into his correct grid slot or potentially into uh, pit lane and uh, out of the way altogether. We'll monitor that situation. Then might just lead to a small delay uh, to the start of the green flag lap. Good crowd assembled. Uh, this is always a popular event, this, uh, in uh, the... British motorsport calendar, one of the first race meetings, certainly one of uh, certainly the first major race meeting of the year. And uh, over the Easter Bank holiday weekend, it draws in the crowd by the thousands. And uh, many of them are making their way trackside because they know that where there are Janetta Juniors, there is guaranteed to be an exciting race. Last season uh, was certainly no exception. We had some cracking racing uh, in uh, 2023 as the uh, Janetta Championships made a full-time transition 
transition over uh, to the SRO package. This year, big changes afoot for Ginetta uh, with uh, all three of their championships now operating under the guidance of the BRSCC. And I know that uh, many of the teams are already noticing the benefits of that. So uh, exciting things ahead, hopefully, uh, with uh, some of the grids we're hoping uh, increasing as the year goes on. There's never really, though, been a lack of enthusiasm for Ginetta Junior Racing, though, has this? has always been really consistently their most uh, popular and uh, well-subscribed championship, and with good reason. So, cars are released onto the green flag lap. James Shotton is still stationary now with the door open, so there appears to be still a drama with the Fox Motorsport car. He's being left behind, unfortunately. Uh, as the rest of them make their way onto that green flag lap. So yellow flags just to make sure everybody avoids that stricken car and uh, making their way past cleanly. I'm glad to say, hopefully, they will get that car removed before too much longer. As uh, the rest of the field makes their way down towards Cascades on the green flag lap in the following order. Ethan Jeff Hall on pole position for our racing. Charlie Hart, as I said, the top returning driver uh, starting alongside him. Marcus Sater and Chase Fernandez are next for our racing and E3 Sport respectively with Henry Jocelyn and Ruben Dan, the Aussie, on the outside of row number three. Fourth row for Isaac Phelps and for Torin Byrne for Pace Performance. Archie Clark and Nicholas Ellis will complete the top ten. And what is, as I said, a very, very sizable grid. Tom Ingram Hill and Alfie Davis are together then on row number six. Row seven, we will not see by the looks of it James Shotton. His car, I think, has been pushed into the pit lane. So Jude Peters will have the seventh row to themselves. Row eight uh, is where we will find Felix Livesey and Harry Moss towards the back end of the grid. Max Cuthbert and Jack Robinson uh, are next together on the night row. Row 10, Ethan Carney and Colin Cronin. Uh, and then the penultimate row shared by James Ellis and the returning Holly Mile uh, with, at the back of the grid, Giovanni Castel joseph 23rd and last. Now, I say that we've had the James Shotter car into the pit lane. Looking out of the commentary box window, I can't actually see it in the pit lane, so it's possible they got the car fired up after all and uh, out on to the uh, circuit. So around Britain's, we uh, go into Nickerbrook Corner on board with the uh, number 26 car. This is Henry Jocelyn. And uh, we have had a history of picking good cars to put on board cameras in uh, in the past in Ginetta Racing. And uh, I think we've done the same again today. Henry starting from that third row of the grid. Uh, we've also got the number 11 of Ruben Dan starting alongside. So both of the third row starters will have not quite driver's eye views of how their races uh, pan out, but certainly the onboard cameras give a unique perspective as to what's going on in what is typically a very close quarters and frenetic race in the Michelin Ginetta Juniors. Jude Peters also will be guiding us around the undulations of the Cheshire circuit which looks fantastic, I have to say, uh, at the start of the season. As ever, there's some work being done to Walton Park uh, over the off-season, uh, including the installation of a rather sizable gravel trap at Old Hall Corner, the very first corner. And uh, that, I'm sure, will have been met by the drivers with a, a mix of gratitude and fear, to be honest, because a gravel trap can very easily end your race, but it's far better to get stuck into a gravel trap than it is to slide across wet grass into an Armco barrier, so, or a tyre wall as it is uh, up at uh, Old Hall. So uh, whether that will lead to an increase in safety car interventions, we shall have to wait and see. For now, the field makes its way down onto the grid. There is uh, James Shotton's car, so there we go. That's uh, cleared that up. He did go into the pit lane. He's lining up a pit exit and will start once everybody else has got going. So it's Ethan Jeff Hall and Charlie Hart looking to try and make the best of the starts from the front of the field. A couple of drivers, again, just taking a moment or two to uh, pull up into position, but I think we're almost good to go then for 20 minutes in the uh, opening round of the 2024 Michelin Ginetta Junior Championship. And this should be a fascinating race. The first few moments could be crucial. Who gets into Old Hall Corner as the race leader? And will they be able to stay there for the duration? Revs start to rise then. Eyes to the light in Gantry. The red lights are on. They go out now and we are away and racing in 2024 pretty even start from both of the front row drivers i would say ethan jeff hall and charlie hart but with the inside line it should be the pole sitter who hangs on in the r racing machine everybody off the line cleanly sweeping around the outside goes chase fernandez and he's found a way past marcus sater already into third position we ride on board uh, with the number 11 of ruben dan as it's already nearly side by side for the race lead dropping downhill through the left hander at cascades and it's still ethan jeff hall hanging on you 
can see him working away at the wheel there on cold tyres. These cars can be pretty lively. And Cascades is a very, very challenging corner, as is the next one down at the end of the lakeside straight into the left-hander at Island Bend, where once again, Ethan Jeff Hall has to drive to the inside of the road to defend. That compromises his line on exit, but actually, by drifting wide, puts him back on the inside line for the steeply banked right-hander at the Shell Hairpin. First side-by-side -side battle sees Torin Byrne on the outside line, and that was Nick Ellis trying to find a way through. That's just inside the top ten, I think, as they head towards Britain's for the first time. Race leader is still Jeff Hall, but he looks anything but comfortable. Certainly not able to break away in the early stages from Charlie Hart, who possibly knows that on cold tyres, with that extra year's experience of the car, he might have a little bit of an edge, maybe, uh, over his uh, far less experienced rival in front, down through the uh, right-left at the Hislop chicane. And then into Nickelbrook Corner itself, again, tricky on cold tyres. You're going over a crest, the car goes light, and it's not an ideal place to be going side by side, as is the case in the midfield. That is once again the number 18 of Torin Byrne, this time with Alfie Davis coming up the inside. So Alfie Davis from 12th on the grid, I think has gained a position or so since the start, heading underneath the bridge then to the top of Clay Hill. Look at this for the race lead. And uh, because Ethan Jeff Hall is driving so defensively, it's bottling up this whole lead group. And uh, I sense some action on the horizon, perhaps down into the braking zone at Lodge Corner, which is arguably the best place to try and launch an attack around the Alton Park circuit. A couple of drivers trying the outside line, which is a brave place to be. The number 67 is Marcus Sater trying to reclaim that third place from Chase Fernandez, but actually succeeds only in getting shuffled out. And that could allow Henry Jocelyn uh, to get through to the inside line. I think it has. They are side by side then uh, for fourth position, heading for Old Hall Corner. Jocelyn goes through. So too, I suspect, will the number 35 machine of Isaac Phelps, who's now up into the top five, nearly up into the top five. They're banging doors, still debating the position as they head down the avenue. And now Phelps finds himself on the wrong side of the road. And it should be that Sater's able to uh, come back in line in fifth position. So only the one place lost, but it was very nearly one place gained instead. Up through the gears then, down the lakeside straight, side by side battling going on just ahead of us, and that is once again Sater and Phelps, I believe, going door handle to door handle, and that time the move is made into Island Bend, they skate right to the edge of the road, dangerously close, I'd say, to the edge of the road, and wide at Shell was the race leader, I don't think I've seen Ethan Jeff Hall hit an apex yet, he's really struggling with grip uh, from both ends of the car, it would seem, but particularly the front, just can't get the car turned in, and of course, because he's defending, he's going in on the wrong line, it's compromising his mid-corner and corner exit speed, and Charlie Hart is his hands with glee here he knows that at this stage of the race he might have a chance to get through the question is where do you make the move such a difficult racetrack to overtake on and first round of the championship they'll all want to try and uh, remain friends for the time being save the really risky stuff perhaps for the second half of the season or at least later on in the weekend One race today two races tomorrow so, well, in fact, not tomorrow monday of course easter monday day off tomorrow, so plenty of time to repair the cars, actually. Uh, and I'm sure that is very much on the driver's minds. Over Clay Hill we go once again then. Jeff Hall continuing to lead the race. We have got one driver on the timing screen, at least, dropping down the order. That's Ruben Dan. Now, has he had a drama, or is that just a transponder issue? We'll try and pick that one up in a minute. Now, I think I can still see the number 11 Elite, Elite Motorsport car in the lead group, where, once again, we have a challenge around the outside at Lodge, this time from Chase Fernandez, and he actually draws fully level with Charlie Hart, who shows him the edge of the road on corner exit, side by side over Deer's Leap, and towards Old Hall Corner now, for the first time, really, race leader Ethan Jeff Hall able to catch his breath and watch this situation unfold behind him, with a grandstand view as Jocelyn in fourth position, Fernandez desperate to try and get back in line, which he does, but only just about found a uh, Ginetta G40 sized gap to slot into at the apex of Old Hall Corner. And he's almost pushing Charlie Hart down the hill towards Cascade. This has got disaster written all over it, hasn't it? They're so close together. And because, again, the leader continues to defend, they're not going to spread out anytime soon. Again, down the lakeside straight immediately, Ethan Jeff Hall pulls to driver's left, defends the white line on the inside line at Island Bend, and that scatters everybody behind, right to the edge of the road they go on the exit of the quick left-hander, and then onto the brakes, into the hairpin where he's even wider this time, the race leader, than he was a lap ago, so Charlie Hart wastes no time in getting alongside, side by side for the race lead, but we're going to have to turn left into the Britain chicane now, who is this going to favour? Hart on the left, on the right is Jeff Hall, he hammers the curbs and bounces back in front, 10 out of 10 for commitment there for Ethan Jeff Hall, and Charlie Hart must have thought there that that was his opportunity, 
just didn't quite pan out for him, but he's got plenty of time left. We are only just past a quarter race distance. The problem for Hart, though, is if he goes for a move, he leaves himself vulnerable to attack from the car behind. Someone goes grass tracking, meanwhile, uh, further back over the top of, uh, Deers, of uh, Hilltop, I should say. And uh, that is our first sign, I think, of the uh, uh, fairly familiar sight of front bodywork of a Ginetta coming loose. So that was, I think, maybe the number 70 I was hearing there of uh, Jude Peters, who's been off coming over hilltop, dislodges the front bodywork, and that might now require a visit to the pit lane. Leaders, though, are at Druids uh, for the third time of asking. And a small breakaway by Ginetta Junior standards amongst the top three. And that might just tempt Chase Fernandez into going for that round the outside move again, which he does. He really commits to it this time, gets his nose ahead. And this might, might, might just work. Has he got the momentum off the exit of the corner? He's well wide over the uh, concrete runoff area. And that really didn't actually benefit him at all, did it? Out of the corner, uh, it is Hart who gets back level with him and retains that inside line for Old Hall Corner through the quick right hand, and they go big, big, big oversteer, and we're gonna lose control completely around, goes the number 26 of Jocelyn, right in front of the pack, mercifully, they all go left, he goes right, and there is no further contact, but you could see that from the onboard, carried a bit too much speed into Old Hall Corner, there's a big dip right on the apex, the car got unsettled, and around he went. Thankfully, no one collected him, he should be able to select first gear and return to racing, but, uh, pretty much right at the back of the pack. So I should expect that's done nothing to deter the leading group from uh, racing pretty hard. It is still uh, our pole sitter, Ethan Jeff Hall, who leads the way, but once again, locks up, goes wide at the shell hairpin. And for the third lap in a row, Charlie Hart nuzzles alongside, but for the third lap in a row, he can't commit to the manoeuvre. It's not an intentional line that Ethan is taking there, but he does seem to find a way to make it work by going high and wide through the shell hairpin. He leaves the door open on the way in, but carries good momentum off the corner, almost NASCAR style, and ends up getting to the Britain chicane in front still. And Charlie Hart is now starting to realize, I think he's gonna have to get pretty inventive uh, to make this move stick. So through the uh, Britain chicane, they go. We're gonna take a little look once again, I think, at what happened there at uh, Old Hall Corner. And uh, our first sort of major casualty of the race, really. Chase Fernandez there. Ah, that's what happened. He tried to get to the inside of Chase Fernandez, was squeezed towards the apex. And with that much steering lock through that dip that I mentioned, it was just enough for the rear end of the car to get unsettled. So I didn't realize from the onboard they were side by side. And uh, that is unfortunately what proved to be the undoing for Henry Joslin, that promotes now then uh, Isaac Phelps into fourth. Isaac started fourth, one of the biggest movers of the race so far, and he's very much a part of this leading group now, and because he is on the tail of Chase Fernandez, Chase wasn't able to make that move to the outside line at Lodge Corner this time, so they actually stay single file for now. Further back there is the number 18, that is uh, Torin Byrne, started eighth, running tenth at the moment. As everyone is uh, sort of playing a bit of a high-speed game of chess, aren't they, into Old Hall Corner. Nobody wants to go to the racing line because that leaves the door open on the inside. Although, as we saw a lap ago, it's not always the place to be, actually, if you are side-by-side -side through Old Hall. Around the outside, though, fully commits this time, Isaac Phelps, and I think that's going to net him third place. Drives right round the outside of Chase Fernandez, picks up a slipstream now from Charlie Hart down the lakeside straight, and if he's willing to tough it out on the outside at Island Bend, it could move him into a podium position. Let's see how this one works out. No, not quite able uh, to hang on around the outside, and so Chase Fernandez hangs on to third place. But of course, as uh, that move didn't work for Phelps, it now means he's immediately under attack uh, from the two cars behind, the number 43 of Archie Clark, uh, and then uh, Marcus Sater, who, remember, started third on the grid, the uh, grey and red car at the back of that leading group, will not be happy to be at the back of the leading group. He would have been expecting to be fighting for the race victory. So, so far, so good then for Ethan Jeff Hall who does seem, well, he's still driving defensively, but he's making fewer mistakes now, settling into this, I'm sure. Debutant in the championship, remember, so a lot of pressure on uh, that young man's shoulders. But so far, soaking up the pressure pretty well as we ride on board with uh, the 11th place uh, car, I believe this is. Uh, car 11 of, uh, excuse me, of uh, Ethan Dan, that is, isn't it? Uh, who is uh, running a little bit further up the order, eighth place at the moment. Just dropping back maybe from the group of cars ahead who continue to do battle through the double apex right-hander at Druids. And Ethan Jeff Hall 
as defensive as he's having to drive, is not opening the door. At least not long enough anyway for Charlie Hart to take advantage. Charlie almost got into the back of him there, though, into Lodge. As on the inside, Nips, that was a move, wasn't it, made by uh, Marcus Sater. So Sater very quietly there, moving up an extra position into the top five now. Nicely done up the inside of a not at all defensive Archie Clark. And that's why we're seeing such defensive driving from the race leader. If you do leave the door open into the braking zones, it will cost you. They're still side by side, though, at Old Hall Corner. Sater, though, will hang on around the uh, inside line. And that should now bring, actually, that number 11 machine of uh, Ruben Dan onto their tail. Down through Cascades comes the leading quartet. And uh, it is Ethan Jeff Hall continuing to lead them for our racing. Charlie Hart for Elite Motorsport in second. Chase Fernandez uh, for E3 Sport in third. And uh, then the second of the elite cars is the white and black machine of Phelps in fourth position. They fan out down the straight and they merge back towards the apex uh, to Ireland Bend. But with that battle really starting to ignite now for fifth position, it is just allowing these leading four to pull a small little gap. Well, I might have spoken too soon because uh, I reckon that Sater's starting to bridge that gap already. We are just past half race distance then, eight minutes and 20 seconds to go in what so far has been a very close opening round of the championship. Someone goes straight on at the Britain chicane. That was Torin Byrne, who had, I believe, Ruben Dan up the inside into Britain's and uh, didn't dare turn in for fear of contact, so chose to take the shortcut. No harm, no foul, no advantage gained. So hopefully no penalty should be incoming. Yes, a very close battle, this, amongst the leaders, but uh, we have seen this difficulty in overtaking. If everyone's going to drive around the inside of the racetrack, perhaps the only option is to go the long way round, but that is fraught with danger when you're in a group of cars bunched this closely together, nose to tail. It's very easy to end up handing a few positions to your opponents if you do venture offline. And first race of the season, points make prizes after all. It's important to try and bank some points in this first race. There are three races this weekend alone and then a busy season ahead. Plenty more opportunities to get those race wins. Charlie Hart hedges his bets there, looks to go to the outside, then dives back to the inside. There's contact further back, though, and barreling down the grass goes the number 74 of Alfie Davis. He was trying to go uh, to the outside of Ruben Dam. Contact made in the braking zone, and they were both very lucky to get away with that, actually. Seemingly unscathed. No obvious damage done, really. Chase Fernandez to the inside at Old Hall Corner. That was a gap that was always going to close. And thankfully, he got his nose out of the gap before it did shut. That just backs Phelps up into Sater, though, who is really coming back into this race, isn't he? To the outside he goes. He gets levered aside uh, by Isaac Phelps. But Marcus Sater is not out of this. Starting to show some good pace in the second half of the race. The question is, can he find a way past the cars ahead and get back into podium contention? Slipstream effect so powerful in these Ginetta G40s that uh, it is impossible, near impossible anyway, to pull away at the front of the field. Fernandez is sideways in the braking zone. Uh, Shell, that's twice now on this lap that he's tried to just prise the door open on the inside of Charlie Hart, and twice he's the one who nearly ends up losing out as Phelps once again starts tapping Morse code onto the back of car number 90 curve they take through that Britain chicane. Further back, meanwhile, don't be fooled into thinking that uh, the only battle going on is the one at the front of the field. We've also got, remember, the recovering Henry Jocelyn, who had that uh, high-speed rotation at Old Hall Corner earlier on. He did continue. He started this lap in 19th, and he's set the fastest lap now, 206.092. Uh, so going quickly, that was two laps ago, so I think the first lap after the spin uh, that he set the fastest lap. And the 2.060 is quite a bit quicker. Well, it's actually one and a half seconds quicker than the race leaders are going at the moment because they're so busy battling each other. The time to set quick lap times is in qualifying in the race. It's all about hanging on to that trap position if you can, which so far Ethan Jeff Hall has done a terrific job of doing. Helped, of course, by the fact that Charlie Hart has got this pressure from Chase Fernandez and Isaac Phelps and Marcus Sater and Archie Clark as well. To the outside again goes Fernandez, and this time he's fully cleared. Charlie Hart actually draws level for the race lead. Now, can he get back in line? That's the question. This could be enough for second position. He's going to be on the outside line for Old Hall Corner, and he doesn't have a slipstream look because the race leader pulls to the right-hand side of the road, and that, I fear, is going to mean that Chase Fernandez, not only does he not take second, but he actually drops off the podium places because up the inside goes Isaac Phelps, and he is into third position. 
so, so nearly works for Chase Fernandez. If he had found an extra quarter of a car length, he would have cleared Charlie Hart and would have been second. He's back round the outside now at Cascade. A little bit frustrated, I feel, is Chase Fernandez. Just could not quite get back in line. And uh, it ended up costing him a position. That's punched everybody back together now, including actually the seventh place car, which appropriately enough is the number seven of Nick Ellis. So it's a seven car leading group that makes its way through Ireland Bend. We're into the final quarter of this opening round of the Michelin Ginetta Junior Championship. Through the shell hairpin they head. Henry Jocelyn reports, by the way, he's 16th place at the moment, which means that he's about a second adrift of uh, another recovering driver, actually, James Shotton. Remember, he started from the pit lane. Uh, those two both trying to move through the field. But by the end of the lap, I reckon Jocelyn should be on Shotton's tail. Henry qualified fifth, remember, so we know that he's got good pace. Uh, but unfortunately, with it all to do after that spin earlier on. Right, leaders down through the... Uh, Hislop's chicane, again, hopping over the kerb through the right. Once more, defending the inside line is Ethan Jeff Hall. It's a remarkable drive, this, from Ethan, um, because rarely have I seen a driver having to drive this defensively for so long, not make a mistake, uh, and not at any point, really, leave that door properly open. So uh, he's driven very well. Charlie Hart has driven equally well, really, not to uh, lose that second place ducking and diving around behind the race leader as he has been. But is there a fully committed move perhaps coming from the second place man at some point? A do or die manoeuvre maybe on the last lap. Well, we're getting close to that now. With lap times just over the two minute mark, we are about to start the penultimate lap of the race. Two more laps to go. Ethan Jeff Hall still leads. Charlie Hart is still in second position. But of course, now up into third position, the second of the Elite Motorsport machines, uh, and that is uh, Isaac Phelps. So we've got Elite Motorsport second and third. Does that maybe change the dynamic now? Because Ethan Jeff Hall is now technically outnumbered. The next two cars behind him, both in the same team. So perhaps if Charlie Hart were to make a move and try and go to the outside, he might get a bit of assistance from Phelps rather than uh, Isaac immediately filling the gap and claiming second place for himself. Oh, off in the background, that was, uh, I think, Ruben Dan uh, in the number 11 car. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Bouncing through the gravel at Cascades and uh, another of the Elite Motorsport Brigade, unfortunately finding trouble, but thankfully finding his way uh, back onto the racetrack as well. Chase Fernandez, not for the first time, goes for the high line, this time at Shell. Now here it might work because you've got the banking in your favour, uh, but he gets shown the edge of the road, loses the rear bodywork, loses one place, loses two places, and uh, unfortunately gains only in frustration levels. It's been a very disappointing race this for Chase Fernandez. He's obviously had good pace. He's been running in the lead group, but every time he goes for a move, he seems to come off second best and uh, the same true at the Shell Hairpin. In fairness to Isaac Phelps, he was always going to run him to the edge of the track and uh, with the wet grass, uh, it's never really a good place to be that. So down to the back of the group goes Chase Fernandez. Well off the podium now, sixth position. He's immediately trying to find a way back ahead uh, of the number 43 machine of Clark. Archie Clark started this race in ninth position. He was briefly there up into the top five, but about to lose that position once more uh, to the recovering Fernandez, who is already actually past him into fifth position. So slipstream straight through on the run over Clay Hill. So then there were four for now, at least, in this leading group. We're about to start the final lap of the race. We have got two Elite Motorsport cars sandwiched in between two our racing machines. And I spoke way too soon because already by defending through Lodge Corner, that's bottled the whole group back together and Chase Fernandez has got another opportunity uh, to try and find his way uh, back into the top four. He's almost on the inside line, but no, can't quite get fully to the inside of uh, Marcus Sater's number 67 machine. Through Old Hall Corner, they head once again, then down the avenue for the last time. And the race leader, Ethan Jeff Hall, just needs to drive one more perfect lap. He really hasn't put a foot wrong all race, even when he has made small mistakes. He's recovered from them well, and he's been able to keep Charlie Hart behind him. Will the elite boys gang up on him, though? They've dropped Satan now after that defensive move uh, through Old Hall Corner. He's going to be busy, I think, dealing with uh, a fired-up Chase Fernandez for the final lap. They break rank into Ireland Bend, but... No overlaps, no way through. And Ethan Jeff Hall survives one of the big uh, overtaking opportunities on the lap. Covers the inside line through the shell hairpin. 
realistically, we're looking at maybe two more places to overtake down into the braking zone at Hislops or the final braking zone at Lodge Corner. There has been many a race down the years here at Hilton Park uh, decided in the final couple of hundred metres. And I suspect this one is going to be much the same. It will all come down to whether or not Charlie Hart feels that he can commit to that outside line. At no point, really, have we seen him try uh, to go to the outside at Lodge. Always fearful of the cars behind him going to the inside into the corner. But final lap of the race, it might be worth the risk. He takes a nice wide sweeping line into Nickelbrook corner, squares up the apex of the corner, gets on the power nice and early. Does he have the run? Does he have the overlap? There's a squeeze, there's not quite space. And still, Ethan Jeff Hall holds on to the advantage underneath the pedestrian bridge for the final time. And up towards the double apex right hander at Druids, the exit from which could decide this race, because that will decide whether or not Charlie Hart or indeed Isaac Phelps in third position can realistically make a move into the braking zone, which we are approaching defensive line unsurprisingly taken by the race leader to the outside does go Charlie Hart he's late on the brakes but not late enough Ethan Jeff Hall will sail into the corner and provided he doesn't run wide on the exit which he doesn't he is going to crest Deer's Leap to see the checkered flag and claim the victory in the opening round of the 2024 Michelin Janetta Junior Championship Jeff Hall wins Hart second Phelps third the top three covered by three and a half tenths at the end of a race that really was everything we expected to be close quarters side by side but ultimately difficult to make a move stick especially against a driver such as Ethan Jeff Hall who knows how to defend there by the way uh, is Henry Jocelyn uh, recovered to 13th place in the end after the spin at Old Hall corner one place uh, eventually ahead of uh, the James Shotton car number 17 which was the one that started from the pit lane but uh, disappointment really for uh, Henry who had that spin whilst running in podium contention side by side. I seem to recall with uh, Chase Fernandez through Old Hall Corner. Round he went, dropped to the back of the field and recovered in the end to uh, 13th on the timing screen. But it is Ethan Jeff Hall who will celebrate the victory in the opening round of the championship. Charlie Hart will be a tad frustrated, I think. He... You could argue, really, though, Charlie spent most of that race watching his mirrors as well, not really daring to make a move on the race leader. Trying, no doubt about it, but always wary uh, that the challenge could come still from behind him. And uh, don't let that take anything away from Jeff Hall. That was a brilliant defensive drive, but uh, yeah, uh, certainly helped by the fact that Charlie Hart in second was constantly under pressure. I see drivers waving at uh, marshals as well as they uh, make their way back around to Park Ferme at the end of a very entertaining race. So the big crowd here at Alton Park have enjoyed a fantastic opening race of the season, the Michelin Janetta Junior Championship. It was won by Ethan Jeff Hall by just under two tenths of a second from Charlie Hart in second position uh, with his teammate Isaac Phelps behind him in third. Marcus Sater had an up and down race and eventually finished in fourth ahead of the frustrated Chase Fernandez. Archie Clark was sixth, Torin Byrne seventh, Nicholas Ellis eighth, Alfie Davis ninth and Tom Ingram Hill completed the top ten. Then it was Felix Livesey, Henry Jocelyn, Harry Moss and James Shotton with Ruben Dan and Colin Crown behind and then it was Jude Peters, Max Cuthbert, Jack Robinson and Holly Mild to complete the top 20. Whilst Ethan Carney, James Ellis and Giovanni Cassell-Joseph meant that all 23 starters reached the flag. So, a very entertaining opening race of the season. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights. Well, right from the start, it was the pole sitter Ethan Jeff Hall who seized command of the opening round of the Michelin Janetta Junior Championship. He held off his fellow front row starter, Charlie Hart, and led the field through Old Hall Corner for the first time. It was a very clean start, a very clean race, actually, considering how close that leading pack were to each other, really, for every one of the 20 minutes. And the big story for Jeff Hall was a race spent in his mirrors, constantly defending, and really a couple of little lockups into the shell hairpin aside, he rarely looked likely to lose it. Charlie Hart, this was probably his best chance to go through, but just couldn't stick it out around the outside into the Britain chicane. And so Ethan Jeff Hall managed to keep him at arm's length. One of the big moments of the race came when the battle for podium places ignited at Old Hall Corner. Henry Jocelyn was up the inside of Chase Fernandez, but couldn't keep the car under control. Had a full 360 rotation right in front of the midfield runners, who thankfully avoided him and eventually recover to 13th. It was 
Also a drama filled race for the number 11 of Ruben Dan here, tangling with the number 74 at Lodge Corner of Alfie Davis. And Dan would eventually find himself in the gravel trap at Cascades. Chase Fernandez tried and tried on multiple occasions to go around the outside, but repeatedly found himself off the edge of the road, eventually losing the rear bodywork at Shell. It was side by side right until the final corner, but still Charlie Hart could not find a way to breach the defences of Ethan Jeff Hall, who came through to claim victory in the opening round of the championship here at a sunny Alton Park.